Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another NITMED tutorials. Learn to live. And today we're going to be talking about one of the most important aspects of being a human being. That is primarily and only done by the female gender. That's the act of labor. You remember in your biology class the characteristics of the living thing movement, respiration, nutrition, irritability, growth, excretion, reproduction. It's R. Then we have death, adaptation, and competition. Mr. Niger Dark, what reproduction? Okay, so, labor. First of all, what is labor? Labor is the onset of regular, progressive, painful uterine contraction as associated with descent of the presenting parts and cervical dilatation after the age of viability. Okay, that's the simple definition of labor. Because prior to the age of viability, it's not labor. So the age of viability, then call it labor. So criteria for a normal labor must be spontaneous, must not be induced. It must be a single, so funny enough, multiple gestation twins is actually a normal labor. Child must be at full term, that's 37 for two weeks. Must be alive and viable. Must present him with the vertex head presentation, occipital anterior, through the normal passage within a reasonable time, without major surgical interventions and without complications to the mother or fetus. These are the criteria of normal labor. So let me just go back to small physiology and talk about the onset of labor. So, why will labor start? Some people say it's the child that will tell the mother, okay, mommy, I want to come out. Let me out. So it all begins with the hypothalamic hypophysial pathway. So the hypothalamus produces corticotropin releasing hormone, which then stimulates the, the, the pituitary gland to produce ACTH, which then stimulates the adrenals of the child to produce estriol, produce dihydroepiandosterone. Dihydroepiandosterone is then converted to estriol. So now, normally, progesterone is higher than estrogen in the pregnant state. Now, the higher progesterone maintains a quiescent state of pregnancy. When this biochemical process occurs, estrogen overtakes progesterone, and the switch, the imbalance of estrogen and progesterone will lead to a cascade of different events, including the production of prostaglandin receptors, stimulation of production of COX-2, all of this will then inculcate in what? The onset of labor. So the switch of estrogen and progesterone is very, very, very important for the onset of labor. Okay? So truly, these are certain things you see in normal labor. True labor pain, regular painful uterine contractions, the show, cervical effacement and dilatation, and formation of waters. We have the water ahead and the water behind the presenting one. So stages of normal labor. There are three stages. All people say there are four stages. So the first stage is from the onset of labor to what? Full cervical dilatation. Second stage is from full cervical dilatation to delivery of the fetus. And the third stage is from delivery of the fetus to delivery of the placental membranes. And then the fourth stage is when we wait one hour while so we're checking and surrounding, checking the model in anticipation of possible postpartum hemorrhage. So in the prima gravida, the duration of the first stage is usually 12. While in multigravida or multiparasomal is about 6. Also, the duration of the second stage is about 1 hour to 2 hours, while in multiparasomal about 30 minutes to an hour. While the third stage is up to 30 minutes in the prima gravida and up to 15 minutes in the multigravida. Okay, so look at it. Cervical effacement. So usually the doctor usually uses fingers to assess the cervical effacement. And we see the cervix is fully dilated at 10 cm. That's when the cervix is fully what? Dilated at 10 cm. So cervical effacement usually involves the, the actions of um, prostaglandins and the change of the cervical connective tissue from that that predominantly is usually type 4, type collagen, to that that has a lot of glycosaminoglycans and water. So 
that's the server kind of face paint so i'm going and then the service begins to dilate server kind of dilatation occurs together with uh, contractions okay let's say labor progresses properly when the cervix is dilating the fetus part is descending and the uterus are contracting okay so you can see it so the first stage even has two phases we have the latent phase and we have the active phase so the latent phase is from 0 cm dilatation to what to 4 cm dilatation okay so 0 cm dilatation to 4 cm dilatation is what latent phase and the active phase is from 4 cm dilatation upwards the second stage of labor this is what from the food dilatation to delivery so this is where we have the mechanism of labor and we have the descent engagement flexion now this first act descent engagement flexion they don't occur one after the other they occur simultaneously and the child is descending is getting engaged within the pelvis and his head is flexing the aim of flexion is to present the shortest possible diameter which is the what sub occipitobragmatic diameter okay so after flexion then that goes internal rotation where he what turns after internal rotation it then goes extension now extension that we call the crowning where we see the fetal head come out and then we see restitution and then external rotation of the head and delivery of the anterior shoulder and delivery of the posterior shoulder so this sense what would you call syncletism what syncletism what syncletism means is that <coughs> the biparietal diameter so syncletism is the parallelism between the pelvic plane and the plane of the presenting part so the biparietal diameter you draw a line by a parietal diameter it's supposed to be parallel to the pelvic plane so you can see here that there is no what that here we have asynchronism you have anterior asynchronism in which the parietal diameter is pushed anterior to the pelvic plane okay so we have the engagement so now we say engage if it is completely engaged when it's about four over five or five over five and there's a strong relationship between engagement and station okay now station is the comparison of the fetal presenting parts that's the biparietal diameter with the ischial spine now when the biparietal diameter the level of the ischial spine we say the station is zero okay when it's above the ischial spine could be a minus one minus two minus three when it's below the ischial spine has plus one plus four plus three so plus two plus three it is what engaged okay so how you assess station is that you put your palm and the amount of fingers you can get under the presenting part in terms of so it could be five over five if you get your five fingers four over five get your four fingers three over five is only three fingers two over five and sometimes if you can't get any finger at all most likely the child has been engaged and is beyond station zero okay so see now if this occipital frontal diameter you are presenting a longer part the pelvic inlet when the child is flexed and you provide and gives all the sub occipital pragmatic diameter has a short arc in about 9.5 centimeters then internal rotation you can just see the diagram very easy to understand the child rotates internally then there's extension this is the part we saw so this is the part we see the child coming out is the crowning say so the child has crowned and restitution and external rotation deliver the shoulders anterior shoulder first then posterior shoulder thank you this is a summary of everything we have talked about to the test stage is what delivery of the placenta and the fetal membranes when the placenta is delivered you want to inspect it to make sure that the vessels are complete this is how the placenta is delivered with gentle traction gentle traction Alright, see you next time.